Today, we're going to have a look at 10 unique products for mountain bikers, gravel extraordinaires, or anyone who likes to pedal. And I hope you find this video entertaining, because I actually lost one of the products while getting footage. This tiny GoPro tripod. While packing up in the dark after a night ride, it fell off the roof of my car. The following morning, I went back to look for it and it was gone, along with the GoPro that was attached to it. Before I lost it, this tripod always lived in my pack. It's extremely lightweight and extends to be much taller than other tripods many times its size. With the legs closed, it can be extended and used as a selfie stick, or collapsed and used as a handle. If you like bringing an action camera on mountain bike rides, this is one of the most versatile and compact accessories you can get. But like other genuine GoPro products, its price borders on ridiculous. 38 bucks for plastic. Nevertheless, I liked mine enough to order a replacement. It has become a primary piece of gear and now I can't go without it. This next product could only fit on my road bike because it requires a lot of space inside of your frame. Introducing the Growler Grabber. Unlike normal bottle cages, which of course are designed to hold whiskey flasks, the Growler Grabber fits a 64 ounce growler. To accommodate the heft of such a vessel, the Growler Grabber is much thicker than your standard bottle cage. It's also outfitted with rubber grips to keep the growler from popping out. Lest you think these rubber grips will protect your glass beer container while descending a rough gravel road. Well, I assure you they will not. In fact, even my cranks hit this growler on every revolution. But this product is more of a novelty item reserved for pub crawls and bike festivals. It's well made, looks nice, and is probably capable of clearing the cranks on a slightly larger bike. The growler grabber is hilarious and fun as long as you understand what it is and isn't designed for. Next up is this The Kind Descent 70 liter bag. My wife recently ordered me a bunch of stuff from Dekine, and when I saw this, I thought it was just a duffel bag. But in reality, it's a glorified duffel bag. But it's actually very well designed. Unzip the bag and you'll find a dedicated tool section, along with a divided compartment for your helmet and a weekend's worth of clothing. In the top is a mesh compartment for your pads and gloves, and a few nooks and crannies for other stuff. Your shoes get their own dedicated pouch at the bottom, complete with a changing mat so you don't need to stand around in the dirt with your socks on. Given the high cost of quality luggage, the $100 price tag of this duffel is digestible, assuming you travel enough to make it worthwhile. Next up, pipe cleaners. But not just any pipe cleaners. Scrubza Trail Picks. When I received these, I assumed they were just an assortment of pipe cleaners repackaged as bike detailing brushes. But what I found out is that they're actually an assortment of pipe cleaners repackaged as bike detailing brushes. But the creator of Scrubza Trail Picks claims to have sourced these brushes based on precise measurements for 10, 11, and 12 speed cassettes. The small premium you pay on these trail picks eliminates the guesswork of sourcing the perfect diameter pipe cleaners for detailing your bike. And to be fair, the guy is right. These fit perfectly in my cassette, and when I try to use the wrong size, it's actually really difficult. Who knew? So while the scrubs of trail picks are in fact just pipe cleaners, they work really well and a fair amount of thought was put into sourcing them. Plus, they're blue. Next up is a lightweight camping chair made by Trekology. Whether you're pedaling out to an event or just want to keep a chair around for after ride beers, this chair is lightweight and compact enough to take with you. I've seen similar chairs priced in excess of $100. And while this is not made of titanium, it is very light and costs only $40. Unlike fold-out chairs, this takes about 30 seconds of assembly, which is not a big deal. It's an adult-sized chair, but it's probably not great if you're particularly large or heavy. But for most of us, it's a great alternative to really expensive versions of the same thing. And mine so far has been working out great. Next up is this Topeak Ratchet Rocket Lite NTX Plus Multi-Tool. As you may have guessed by its complex name, this is just one of many multi-tools in the Ratchet Rocket line. But I'm most impressed with the NTX Plus because it comes with a torque wrench. The Ratchet Rocket Lite NTX Plus is packaged in a ballistic nylon pouch, which you can Velcro strap to your belt or just throw in your bag. Inside is a micro ratchet, a very ergonomic chain tool, a bit extension, 
an impressive assortment of bits, and of course that torque attachment. While this tool is very ergonomic, well equipped and easy to access, the large quantity of loose parts does concern me a bit for trailside use. It's also up for debate as to whether this is quicker or more convenient than a conventional multi-tool. At $80, the Ratchet Rocket NTX Plus is far from a good value even with the torque wrench, and its parts could eventually go missing. But I don't care, because it's shiny, beautiful, clicky, and downright addictive to use. As a tool nerd, I'll take the trade off just to use this little ratchet any chance I can. Now we move on to a product that promises to keep your pedals warm during the winter. Actually, these knock socks are to keep your pedals from damaging other bikes or the inside of your car. And they're a clever solution to a common problem. They're basically just neoprene socks that button into place over your pedals. I quickly realized the size small ones are made for clipless pedals, while the large ones will fit most platforms. There's not much else to say about them. You could use a koozie for the same purpose, but these knock socks do fit a lot better and look legit. I will be using them to store pedals in my bag while traveling. And now I will review the fanny pack you've seen me use for the past few months. I got my first Osprey hip pack a few years back, and it's honestly the most secure, well-equipped one I've ever used. But it has a huge footprint, and I don't really need to carry so much stuff. This pack from high above is just the right size, really comfortable, and handmade in Bellingham, Washington, with materials such as metal buckles and heavy-duty zippers. It has a sorry excuse for a water bottle holder which can be attached to either side, but I don't use it. It bounces around a bit like most hip packs, and the straps do loosen up a bit over the course of a ride. But I love this pack anyway. It's indestructible, comfortable, and has just the right combination of pockets. Plus, it matches my hardtail. Speaking of which, I saw the other color options at Sea Otter, and they were vast. So this pack has a lot of potential for personalization. I saved these last two reviews for the end, because they're for two sets of bike lights and they warrant a little more discussion than the other products. If you want to get into night riding, you really need a floodlight on your handlebars to light up the trail, and a spotlight on your helmet to see around turns. So the two light sets I'm reviewing today both consist of a floodlight and spotlight. And what's interesting about these light sets is that one costs $105, and the other costs about $725. Let's start with the budget lights, which are made by Bright Eyes. As I said, these are $105, and I bought them to review because they actually come with good quality Sanyo batteries. This means they should hold a charge long term, and work okay in cold weather. Indeed, my testing shows that these Bright Eyes lights will easily get you through a 3 hour ride with plenty of power to spare. Both lights come with chargers, an impressive array of high quality mounts, and some bonus accessories like tail lights. They also look nice, have battery indicators, and easy to access buttons. My only criticism of the overall package is the poor quality straps for the floodlight battery. I'd recommend replacing these with any gear straps or even zip ties. As for the performance, have a look at my first downhill. These lights performed about like you would expect for the price. My main criticism would be the spotty, inconsistent beam, which makes it harder to judge the terrain ahead. I had to dial my speed back considerably, and there were some corners I had trouble seeing around. But nobody's trying to win a midnight downhill race with $100 lights. Bright Eyes actually has their priorities straight, choosing to go with good batteries and mounts over really bright lamps with nothing to back them up. So, as an option for a casual night rider, or someone who doesn't intend on going really fast, these are of excellent value, even with the crappy battery strap. Now let's move on to this $725 light set, designed and manufactured in Great Britain, by a company called Exposure. These are expensive boutique lights by any definition, so any flaw in my opinion is egregious. This review is going to be brutal. Let's start with the overall package. Both lights are self-contained, meaning there's no external battery that straps to your frame. While this does make for a nice clean mount without any wires, it also means you'll have a rather large and vulnerable device on your handlebars, which makes me a little nervous given that this floodlight alone is over $500. The build quality on both lights is incredible, and I'd expect nothing less given the price. 
They look and feel like weapons. However, I can't say the same for the mounts. The helmet mount for the spotlight is cleverly designed, but it moves around too easily and is made of flimsy plastic. It just doesn't feel like the mount that should come with a $250 spotlight. That spotlight also comes with a handlebar mount, which has got to be someone's idea of a joke. There's no way I'm plowing through a rock garden with a $250 light mounted to my bars like this. Even the $22 spotlight from Bright Eyes came with multiple mounting options that were more secure than this. As for the floodlight, I was a bit skeptical about the mount to say the least, and this skepticism was confirmed when Alexander crashed. As I kind of suspected, this enormous handlebar mounted lamp is quite vulnerable when things don't go as planned. It's worth noting that I've been in several wrecks with other lights and have never had one come off of a bike, and I doubt there's a person here who hasn't washed out around a turn. For the record, I did repair this mount using a nail as a rivet, and perhaps that failure point was by design to protect carbon bars. In any case, I feel like there should be a better solution. But the real question is, how do these exposure lights perform? They perform about like you would expect from a nuclear reactor. These friggin' things are very bright, and the quality of the beam is as close to flawless as it gets. With these lights, I ride no differently than I would during the day. They're absolutely ridiculous. The battery life on the flood is also impressive. In fact, when you're just sitting there, it dims automatically to save battery, and gets bright again as soon as you get back to Brappen. The spotlight, the one that goes in your helmet, is so bright by itself that it could be used as a primary light. It's truly incredible. But despite all my praise for the performance of these lights, it's still true that you can spend half the money and get something really good. These exposure lights, while absolutely incredible, are lacking in their accessories. And if you're gonna spend laptop money on bike lights, you kind of want every part of the package to be on the same level. If these were priced at three or even 400 bucks, I'd have been a lot more forgiving in this review. Anyway, that's my review of 10 unique bike products. I hope you found this video informative, useful, or even just entertaining. If so, give it a like and check the description if you want additional info on all this stuff. That's it for now, so thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.